Oh, hello there! Welcome to the very spooky classroom, and today we'll be looking at the best anime and manga for Halloween! <laughs> also, I am Denji from Chainsaw Man, specifically when they do the uh, Operation Super Smart so that I could wear my glasses. However, I do not have my rings on for this costume. It's weird. I feel naked. I bet you'd like that, you fucking perp. I mean, let's get into the best anime and manga for Halloween! Guys, can we just accept it already? Can we accept it? Fuck Valentine's Day. Fuck 4th of July. Fuck. OMG, it's the CEO of YouTube. What up, Susie? Yeah, okay. Yeah, fine. I'll, I'll tone it down. Frank Christmas. But seriously, y'all, the fucking king has returned. It's October, and before Halloween is gone far too soon, as it is every year, I want to give recommendations for the best anime and manga for the real holiday season. But if we are to discuss the best anime and manga for this Halloween season, first I think we need to find out how the holiday ended up in America. Halloween's origins date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. The Celts, who lived 2,000 years ago, mostly in the area that is now Ireland, the United Kingdom, in northern France, celebrated their new year on November 1st. The Celts believed that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead become blurred. On the night of October 31st, they celebrated Samhain, when it was believed that the ghost of the dead returned to Earth. And then, time passed, and now we celebrate that in America. Sorta. In comparison, Halloween started in Japan when Tokyo Disney told them about it. While Halloween may not have as much of a storied history in Japan when compared to the origins of the holiday in the United States, kinda, it doesn't mean that they don't love it just as much. The holiday is celebrated in much the same way that it is in the States. If you're a kid, you get to dress up and eat candy. If you're an adult, you get to dress up, get plastered, and eat another person's genitals. What? No. Not... not literally. Every year, many mangaka do fun little doodles of their characters in Halloween costumes, which has given us such joys as Predator Ida and Xenomorph Deku. But, and I promise this is the last but before we discuss the best anime and manga for Halloween, I have a very exciting announcement. Very soon, I will be starting my second channel, The Running Writer. This is where I will be posting two new podcasts that I will be helming. The first being pre-recorded live stream, which will be a weekly show where I go through some of the nerdy news which happened the previous week, give a week review of what I've watched and read, and discuss a fun topic. And the second being Why'd I Write That, where I will be going through each of my short stories and discussing what I like, what I would change, and most importantly, Why'd I Write That? So yes, y'all, please go subscribe to that channel. The link is going to be right up here or right up there, and it will also be down in the description. But anyways, let's get into the best anime and manga for ho- I don't think there is any better place to start than with the man himself, Junji Ito. I have not talked about Ito since my video on Tomi, but that doesn't mean that I have ever stopped loving this horrifying man. If you want something just truly vile and horrific, I would check out No Longer Human, the novel written by Osamu Dazai, which was then adapted into a manga illustrated by Ito. Now, I do not recommend this manga lightly. It is a deeply upsetting character study, which will leave your heart, mind, and stomach in knots. But if you think you're up for it, it is a deeply impactful piece of fiction, but it doesn't have much of that sense of Halloween fun. If you're looking for something Ito, but a bit more lighthearted, but still pretty grim, I would recommend Romina. This one is a pretty underrated Ito, but it is lovely. It's a futuristic story about a sentient planet coming to Earth, and that's all I want to say. But go check it out because it is super fun as some of Ito's most interesting shot compositions. As for his short story collections, there are tons to pick from, but my favorite has to be Shiver. This one can be identified by the gorgeous blue spine, and even houses arguably Ito's most famous short story, also named Shiver. This is the one you've probably seen of that guy with all the holes in his face. He even has a Funko Pop. Or if you want an adorable, hilarious, fun little spooky read, then check out Junji Ito's Cat Diary, I Have the Collector's Edition, which follows the fictionalized experience of the author having cats for the first time. 
But in terms of Ito's more famous long-form stories, I love Tomi and I can't fucking find a copy of Gyo anywhere to save my life, but the one I have to recommend above all other Ito works is Uzumaki. Uzumaki, the story of how the power of the spiral destroys a small Japanese town, is, in my opinion, Ito's magnum opus. Uzumaki is such a fun, wild ride, it has more twists than the spirals for which it's named after, and the art is, in my opinion, Ito's best of all time, being so insanely detailed that it actually made my girlfriend physically ill when she read it. It's amazing. If you're going to read one Ito story to get you into that Halloween spirit, Uzumaki should be it, but we have so much more to talk about than just Junji Ito. Also, real quick, do not watch the Junji Ito collection on Crunchyroll. There is no and will never be a better version of Ito's work than what the man makes himself. You may say I'm dick riding, and to that I say, and I'm bouncing and creaming on that disco stick, baby. Next up is a true classic of horror manga, which I just introduced myself to recently. The Drifting Classroom by Kazuo Umez is an extremely fun mystery story where an entire elementary school in Japan just disappears. It follows both the missing students and faculty who have arrived in a strange, desolate land and the parents who have survived them in the regular world. The author actually inspired Ito, and it really shows. This story has fantastic art and extremely disturbing moments, but overall has a real sense of awful fun and an amazingly fast pace. It feels like every page turn you get a crazy plot twist, and with a relatively small amount of dialogue, this book makes for an incredibly quick and entertaining read. The Drifting Classroom is a fantastically spooky adventure, and I very much recommend reading it by candlelight on All Hallows' Eve. So, in our journey from straight-up horror manga all the way to action shonen, we have to make a couple detours. I... I'm doing it, Griffith. I'm going Berserk, 1997. I have only read a little bit of Berserk, and yeah, I'm getting to it, but I am very confident in saying that the early chapters of Berserk are a wonderfully grim Halloween treat. I mean, I don't even feel the need to like be annoyingly verbose about this. There's a guy with a big sword who fights a ton of skeletons. That's Halloween, baby, what can I say? And inching closer and closer to traditional action shonen, we have Death Note. Certainly not an action series, but it was in Shonen Jump. Death Note is an amazing drama series with plenty of horror elements to chew on, but I am sure that everyone here has checked out the series, although if you haven't, I really can't recommend it enough. Plus, it has some truly bad hoes. Like, downright despicable. And that is a key part of Halloween. Now, before we get into the two series, and sort of one series that I really made this video for, we're gonna run through some other series that I think are at least Halloween adjacent. Jujutsu Kaisen is a wonderfully spooky series that really evokes the spirit of the holiday with great monster designs and really disgusting villains. Like, look at this gross little freak. I really can't think of something scarier to recommend this series on than that shit that happened to Junpei. If you know, you know, and if you don't, nothing bad happens to him. Chainsaw Man, which actually has the first season of its anime coming out right now, you should really check it out has some great horror elements, because the mangaka, Tatsuki Fujimoto, is a huge fucking horror nerd. Fujimoto starts off every volume by naming something he loves, most of the time being horror, such as The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Hereditary, Sudoku vs. Kyoko, Coraline, Don't Look Up, Not That One, Seance, Get Out, Jacob's Ladder, and Koasugi. Plus, you want to know what's really scary? Heartbreak. Read Chainsaw Man. And my final sorta recommendation for this Halloween is specifically the thriller bark arc of One Piece. This arc dips its toes into horror with a fun spooky adventure involving zombies, skeletons, and pirates. But uh, they're in the whole show, the pirates stay. But let's get into the two real recommendations for this video, the absolute meat of this video, the creams de la creams of this video. Tokyo Ghoul? and Soul Eater. Both of these series have their foundations firmly in horror, but they have much different tones, so let's talk about Tokyo Ghoul first. Tokyo Ghoul follows Ken Kaneki, a virgin little loser lad who gets turned into a ghoul, which is a sort of mix between like a zombie and a vampire. 
The art is horrifying and brutally detailed, and it really conveys the awful gore and viscera that come from the many, many, arguably infinite instances of cannibalism in this series. It also has fantastic character writing, especially for Ken, who so desperately doesn't want to succumb to his overwhelming desire to now consume human flesh, even if that flesh is connected to his best friend. You can watch the anime, but it really goes off the fucking rails in the second season, and the manga is absolutely the better experience. But now we have to talk about the real, real, real reason I made this video. The goddamn president of Halloween Nation, Soul Eater. There is not a single piece of media that I have ever read or watched that captures the spirit of Halloween better than Soul Eater. This series has a love of horror and Halloween stitched into its very skin. I'm not even joking, one of the main characters is literally a Frankenstein parody. Soul Eater takes place in a kooky little version of Earth where people can become weapons that can eat someone's soul. There's a cat girl witch who lives in a big ass pumpkin, and there's a character who is the son of death and the moon is fucking weird. Soul Eater is a great series, and I would love to make a video dedicated just to it someday, but today all I need to emphasize for it is that it is the perfect manga or anime for Halloween. If you need a fun, adorable series to watch or read this Halloween, I cannot recommend Soul Eater highly enough. Guys, I love this holiday so much, seriously, it is my favorite holiday, it is the shit. And I just really wanted to talk about some of my favorite Halloween adjacent series today, so thank you for listening. Unfortunately, that is the video today. But before we go, I have one last surprise. I've talked about her many a time, but I think it's finally time I'm going to show my beautiful, lovely, gorgeous girlfriend in our matching Halloween costumes. Enjoy. Gamer Girl Bathwater. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching that video as always. If you made it to this point, a double thank you. I uh, kind of tricked you there with the picture of my girlfriend, but that's too bad. Cry about it. Anyways, what I have to show from my collection this week is this uh, relatively new shonen that I just started reading lately. It is Kaiju Number 8. This series fucks really hard. Uh, the protagonist is like 33 despite being the lead of a shonen series, which as a 22-year-old, I really appreciate, because sometimes it can be a little hard to relate to, like, baby-age Naruto. So, I think it's a cool new direction for shonen to move in, or not new, because nothing is new. But, I'm just glad to see more of it. But anyways, that is the video today, so thank you all for watching, and have a good one.